asked her if she would please share a few of her Christmas memories for us and start out with when you know when you were a little girl and go from there on up to your favorite Christmas time with me as a child. Well, <clears throat> when I was little, I, I remember about four years old, our church program. We had it on Christmas Eve, always. And the church always had this big Christmas tree. Mm -hmm. That's the only decoration we had. We always had a program. The older uh, uh, children had a pageant, but those my age ha did what they what they call back then recitations. Each of us had a little speech to say, and we had learned a song to say. We had all all the program, and after the program, Santa Claus came down the aisle, ho ho ho, and. And he gave out the treats. We didn't have presents. We didn't draw names. We just had, had the treats. And a treat to us was a treat because we only saw an orange at Christmas time. In this, in this uh, brown bag was an orange and an apple, sometimes a banana, candies, the chocolate drops, and the bonbons, I don't know if you know what bonbons are or not. They were candies in different shapes and colors, pinks and greens, and real colorful and real tasty. And there was raisins, but they were not in sun-made boxes. They were on the stem that they had been dried, and they were in that bag. And that was our treat. Now, we had no electricity. I forgot to tell that. When the treat was over, the service was over, and we left for home, and we lived near enough to walk. And as I think I remember, it was a moonlight night, and I remember my daddy holding my hand, and I remember it. That was such a big hand. <laughs> And as we walked along and passed the homes, we saw this tiny light in every window, and that was an oil lamp. And that's one of my first Christmas. Well, when we got home, we, we never put up a Christmas tree until at least two days before Christmas. And we kept it up until after New Year's. And it didn't have a lot of decorations, but we thought it was real pretty. Mm -hmm. And, uh, of course, I, wa the, I wanted to go to bed early because I, I wanted to be sure that Santa Claus came. And uh, there wasn't a lot of gifts, but they were real special. That's one of my first memories. Then when Jane was 10 years old, we asked her what she wanted for Christmas. And she said, I want you to get a little girl from John Tarleton that's 10 years old to spend Christmas with us. And that's all I want. I just want somebody that doesn't have a home to spend Christmas in to spend with us. And whatever you get for me for Christmas, I want you to get the same thing for her. So we said, now, are you sure that this is what you want? And she said, yes, that's what she wanted. And she wanted a new dress. And she wanted her to have a new dress just like hers. So we... Uh, I had to make the arrangements with John Tarleton, and of course we got sizes. And of course they wanted references about us before they let us have a child. So the time came to go get the child, and <coughs> when she brought out the little girl, she said to me, she said, if you don't want her, bring her back. And I thought, what an awful thing to say. What on earth do you mean? 
we just went on and didn't pay any attention to it. And uh, this child was not what Jane expected. She expected the child just like her. This child was happy to be away from a place where everything was done on time. It was, she was free and she'd never been to a farm. So uh, one of the first things she wanted to do, we had both chicken houses full of hens then. I said, well, I'll need to go pick up some eggs. Well, what was that? And I explained to her, she said, well, may I go with you? And I said, yes. She said, Jane, don't you want to go? Jane said, no, I know what picking up eggs is. Mm -hmm. So uh, she went with me and on the windowsill of the chicken house was an old bird's nest. She said, what's that? I told her what it was and I went ahead and explained to her about how the bird lays her eggs and sets on them and hatches and the babies and how, she, how they grow and leave the nest. And she said, but I would like to have that nest. And I said, well, if you want it, you can have it. It, it, didn't look, it certainly wasn't a new nest. It had been there quite a while. She said, I want the nest and I want to take it home. So when we went back to the house, she took it and put it with her things to take it home. So I had a bowl of fruit on the kitchen table with different kinds of fruit, and there was grapes. Oh, she'd like those grapes. And she said, now let me tell you something. When I go home, I want grapes to take with me. So we, we furnished the grapes to take, take with us. And I forget how long she stayed, two or three days. She was there, of course, Christmas Day. And we had the Christmas tree, and we had <coughs> opened the presents on Christmas morning. And she was there over Sunday, and we took her to church. And uh, this woman that told us that, to me, she implied that this child was not a, a good child. This child was a good child. She was curious. She wanted to know about everything. Ralph said the first evening she was there, she said, he said, I go into the dairy to milk the cows. She said, how do you milk the cows? And uh, I said, Jane, go take her and go with your daddy and let her see how to milk the cows. Well, I could look at Jane and tell her she wasn't happy about that. She knew how to milk the cows. <laughs> We can still tell when she's not happy about something. <laughs> but after she, after she learned about the things on the farm, then she was ready to play games and do all these things that Jane had hoped that this girl would do. <laughs> and uh, we, uh, after supper, the first night, we settled in the living room to watch TV, and. Uh, I, of course, stayed in the kitchen, finished up the kitchen, and I popped corn and took it in. And she said, do you mean that we get to stay up past bedtime and watch TV? And do you mean that we, she said, will we have popcorn tomorrow night too? She said, I just love popcorn, and, and I hope we'll have it again tomorrow night. And... I don't know. She she was just uh, so happy, and she made us happy because she showed us that she needed love. And there's so many people out there that, that were hungry for what she was hungry for. She, she was well cared for. There was not anything showed about her in any way that showed that she was not well cared for at John Tarleton. So when we took her back, the same woman met us that uh, was there to see her off. She said, how did it go? And I looked at her and I said, perfect. <laughs> and turned and left. Well, that's my, that's two story, two Christmas stories. Well, thank you for sharing that. Beautiful.
Would you tell about how you communicated with Santa Claus when you were a little girl? They won't know that story. Your, your note to Santa Claus, how you did that. Oh, I always wrote, wrote a note to Santa Claus. You, you don't know where I put it, do you? Mm -mm. Put it in the... Well, we had, we had a room that was special for company. They call it, back then they called it the parlor. So I put my letter in that fireplace. And every day I checked to see if Santa had been there to get it. And it, sometimes it was, it was there a week before it disappeared. Of course, Mom and Daddy took it away. But I, I firmly believe that Santa Claus went into that room yeah. and got that letter. <laughs> well, he did. <laughs> <laughs> but that was important that I write a letter as mm -hmm. long before I, I knew who Santa Claus was. After I went to school and could write. Mm -hmm. I think you've heard enough now. <laughs> Thank you very much. You were beautiful. Thank you.